So you got rotator cuff pain. Today's one of my faves. We're going to go through small ball release of the rotator cuff. This is pretty awesome guys. This is how you heal those jumped up shoulders. So grab a small ball. Doesn't matter what ball you use. You could use a bouncy ball. You could use a lacrosse ball or you could use a tennis ball. We like lacrosse balls because we're mad enough. Yeah, you can smash the tissue quite well with the lacrosse ball, but if you need to start at a softer ball, then please do that. Remember, we don't want this to hurt. We just want it to create some blood flow to the tissue and start to regenerate those tissues. All right, so let's go through a little bit of the anatomy first. Hayden's all painted up here so we can get some good visualization of what's going on. In the orange is the pack width. A little bit of the yellow is the pec and the subscapularis tendons. Don't let me forget to go through this one. Uh, the green represents the bicep and its bicipital tendon. We don't want to be rubbing on that green guy that much. The fuchsia, because we like fuchsia here, is the supraspinatus tendon and its associated muscle up here is in red. The purple is the infraspinatus and a little bit of the posterior delt and straight on the side, which is not fully visualized because we had to cut it off at the middle of it, is the deltoid and its tendon down here. So let's go through small ball release of these tissues and how long are we going to do these for? We're doing it for three to five minutes. Three to five minutes is the basic amount of time that you have to do to get regeneration of tissue. Remember, we're smashing that tissue and what ends up happening is blood comes to that area, brings cytokines and all these inflammatory products, and it starts to regenerate your tendonitis, your tendinosis, and maybe a little bit of those small rotator cuff tears. So, Let's go through the first one, which is a bit of a release of the subscapularis tendon. So with this one, Hayden's going to put his hand in the small of the back. He's going to turn onto the wall a little bit, and he's going to tuck it right into there. You can hold the ball a little bit with this one, and what you end up doing is tugging your body through there. Okay, and what that does is it just pinches into that crook, or that little crook in area with the anterior shoulder. The second one is hitting the supraspinatus tendon. You'll remember that's the fuchsia one. So this one, Hayden's going to put his hand in the small of the back and he's going to go against the wall, kind of at about a 45 degree. What that does right there is, that's perfect, and he just ends up smashing this. Something to remember here is you are not trying to work the bicipital tendon. Everybody's bicipital tendon hurts. You're trying to get to the rotator cuff. This is the rotator cuff video, not the bicipital tendonitis video. We'll get to that one. All right. Third one is the deltoid. The deltoid has these stringy fibers that go from top to bottom. You can have deltoid pain in the back, in the middle, or the front. You got to find the fiber and end up just smashing that one. So with this one, he's going to put his hand in his abdomen and just hold it in there. He's in the front delt and he's going to lean into this. Remember guys, you don't want to be upright straight up against the wall because you're not going to get any load or force into the wall. So your feet can be three, two, three feet away from the wall just so you're getting some good pressure into that if you need to. And then once you're there, what are you doing fine sir? You know what, I'm pulling and tugging the tissue. Yeah. You are smashing it. One of the biggest mistakes we see is a rolling. Can you show them what rolling is? Rolling's back and forth. That's really 2005, 2018. You're getting on the tissue and you are putting pressure and then it's a slow tug. It's a tough concept to master at first, but once you get it, you'll feel that it increases the release of the tissue. Good breathing too. Yeah. All right, the last rotator cuff muscle that we care about is the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus muscle is back here and then it dials in into the attachment to the humerus. Cool part about this is you're treating the tendon in this area and you're also going to treat the muscle. The muscle when you hit uh, certain trigger points you'll get what we call referred pain. Referred pain is shooting pain through the front of the shoulder. Sometimes it can extend down the arm causing your fingers to light up and feel a little numb. 
That's okay. That means you've struck gold, so hang out on those spots. Don't be afraid of them. So let's go through the infraspinatus ball release. With the infraspinatus, your arm is up parallel to the floor, and he's working on the muscle in here, and you got to find the knot, people. you got to hang out in that place until you find something that hurts. Once you're in it, you can bend your knees, and that can load the area a little bit more, and you can get a greater release to that area. To treat the infraspinatus tendon, Hayden turns his body onto the wall so he's basically parallel with the wall. And then once again, the infraspinatus tendon is just sitting right at that top part of the shoulder, really close to the supraspinatus tendon. And you sit there and you smash it for three to five minutes. All right, people, three to five minutes is the basic minimum. You're doing this two to three times a week? For sure. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Could you do it longer? Yeah, you could definitely do it longer. Yeah. It felt good. Old school orthopedic massage used to do this stuff for 20 minutes, right? So doing three to five minutes is a basic minimum to trying to release the shoulders. Get addicted to this stuff, guys. Look us up on Facebook. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and we will be back again with another mobility activity, maybe the bicipital tendonitis one, to fix your guys' problems in the future. All right, ciao for now.